Welcome to this edition of Stogie Geeks. I am your host this week, Joe Hozempa. We are here with Joe D. This week we are going to talk about rum pairings. Why? Whoops, wrong way. Uh, rum pairings. So uh, beginner in a little bit of intermediate level as to the different rums that are out there and some of the cigars that you can pair with. Um, it's a follow-up to the wine segment that we did a couple episodes ago. Uh, today, a uh, very special birthday to uh, our co-host, Joe D. So, happy birthday. We're going to talk about birthday cigars. So, if you want to uh, email me at joeh at stogiegeeks.com, let us know. Uh, I'll check it right before the segment. Let us know what types of cigars you like for your birthday and Stogies of the Week. Stay tuned. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from Villiger North American Studios, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Many of you don't like the Patriots, and quite frankly, uh, those of us on the show today don't really care. Uh, <laughs> then we're gonna... Joe Hollywood joins us. Welcome, Joe. How are you? He's on point. What's up, boys? It's definitely a cigar. <laughs> What's going on? We, th- yeah, we need that. Oh, I mean, the yeah. straw. Oh, a straw. Oh, 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 it's like a classy straw. It's like wow. metal and stuff. Oh, That's a stainless steel boy, straw. Jojo. It's, been, it's already bent. Don't try and bend it anymore because it's metal. You're there so you go, strong, Joe. Bend that straw. Brought to you by Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome to this edition of the Stogie Geek Show. I am your host this week, Joe Hozempa, filling in for Paul. And we have uh, to my right, Joe D. A uh, very happy birthday to, to Joe D. Joe, baby, appreciate you get it. A, Thank you, you. You get a chance to be on Story Geeks for your birthday. I Beautiful mean, thing. Um, in, in our next segment, uh, when we do the Stogie Geek Ideal, um, we're going to talk about birthday cigars. And if you're on the Facebook Live feed or if you're on the Internet checking us out right now, email me at joeh at stogiegeeks.com. Just let me know right quick what you uh, like to smoke during your birthday. I'll check the email before the segment, and we'll give you some some shout-outs and tips. And who knows, maybe you've smoked some stuff that we never had before. Uh, I always like to, um, to, to learn. Every day in this industry, uh, we are 100% learning uh, there. Uh, it, is, it is definitely a, a journey. Uh, the two sticks we are going to be smoking during this, uh, we have the uh, Potagus Heteridge Robusto, which we just lit up, and we'll give our, our, our quick re- reviews on that. And then later on, um, we're going to go with the uh, Hechicera Robusto, um, which uh, I think is going to appear excellent nice. with what we're going to talk about today. Pretty excited. Two sticks I haven't smoked yet. So. Well, I'm trying. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, you gotta, we got we, we to keep it moving. And then later on, we will do the uh, Stogies of the Week. So uh, if you want to wish Joe D a happy birthday, joeh at stogiegeeks.com. Well, let us know where you're listening from. So town, there you go. If you want your name used, give it to us. If not, we'll say whatever the, the your first name is, and then there you go. Uh, either way. But thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in to, to the Stogie Geeks. Today, um, we are going to do rum pairings. And this was a brand new bottle. Well, i got to get used to the opposite, right? right. The, the, <laughs> this was a brand new bottle, but we had to experiment to find out which cigars that we would like and to make sure um, that the rum that we have is ready for the show. And then... <laughs> Remind me to get to this. Right. We have some other samples of rum that are already pre-poured uh, to go, and then we're going to cap this this off uh, as well because um, I kind of wanted to, to kind of give a introductory view to uh, some of the rums, but a little history uh, as to the rum that we are uh, going with today. This is distilled by the Newport Distilling Company. Um, it's all, it, they're located in Newport, Rhode Island, so they are local. Uh, this rum here is uh, made in Newport. It's relatively new on the market. Uh, it's, amaz- it's amazing how they uh, ca- uh, came about. 
Um, they did make a great interview guest. So uh, after this podcast, we'll we'll send that to them, and and we'll definitely do a, a part two. And you want to stick around uh, because we'll we'll have some recipes uh, as <laughs> well um, that that will work with rum. As um, viewers can see, we've already tackled a little bit of that. We've already, <laughs> we've already did some sampling pre-show. Well, yeah. So so this here, this is a uh, single barrel rum. Okay. Uh, again, it's made by uh, uh, Thomas Two. Uh, which is um, right done right here in Newport, Rhode Island, and uh, each barrel uh, spends years aging until it's ready to be filtered, bottled, and labeled. And one of the things that I really like, um, just like the journey of cigars, uh, when it comes to spirits or wine, um, I love the the handcraft aspect of it it gives it gives it a chance to slow down uh each one of these here is individually numbered and batched and uh handled with care right right here in rhode island and so we're gonna pour some rum uh here so actually why don't you do that while i talk that'd be probably more efficient right this one to kick off we are doing this on the rocks and the only reason why i'm doing this on the rocks is because uh, we're we're, we're going to be tasting a couple of di- of different rums here, but if I was uh, all alone or with with some friends and just having this as a uh, choice, we'll just switch glasses. Cool. Yep. yep. Um, if if I was doing that, I would probably ju- just have uh, have this neat uh, as as is. I think it's um, I I, I think it's going to bring in a, a lot of good flavors. And one of the things that I noticed, especially with cigars, is um, when you have a spirit neat, um, you know, with zero ice, just as is, I mean, it really opens up the palate, you know? Right. So cheers and happy birthday yeah, to you. Thank you. You know? And right off the bat, you should Ooh. feel it. You should feel it right on the sides of the tongue. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And the reason why you pay attention to that is because I think... When you have a cigar in, in, in you know, different things, um, different uh, nuances from your palate and, and different senses that your palate picks up with cigars are from the different part of the tongue. And so um, here, uh, you, you should feel it doubly right on the side. Right. Right. So from a rum perspective and from a spirit perspective, that tells me that automatically you need to go medium cigar. Okay. So... Just make sure you can feel it on both sides, right? You know what I'm talking about? Like you get a little bit of that tingle. Like, uh, yep. If I'm off my rocker, please correct me. Oh, right? you're right there. Okay. I don't right, know about you your experience with the, uh, with the you know, rum. I'm, I'm so kind of a- that, that is, you know, to me, that's kind of like a, a, a rule 101 there, you know? Yeah. Uh, if, if you're experimenting with something, especially if you're at a cocktail party over in the summer and you have, um, you know, you have a fire pit going, they might not have the brand of rum or the brand of scotch or the brand of whatever your spirit likes. So then you got to kind of pick, pick what you want. It's kind of like walking into a cigar shop. That's why I always tell some of the newbies is pay attention to the region of the cigar of what you like. Because then if you're picking out a, a brand name that you don't know, you at least know that you like either a Nicaraguan or a Dominican or, or whatever. Yeah, depending on given mood, and that's, that's half the fun, too. You like to mix it up. Absolutely. Now, did so you do the... So if we do the cigar uh, a solid justice, yeah. I'd did you do the sip it. puff? I did. What'd you think? Uh, it's an absolute winner. For a uh, quick thrown two segment right there, it's... Uh, I think it's spot on, friend. You know? Yeah. Op- it, it opens it right up. Now, if this was neat, it would open up a little more. I just don't like doing, I don't like switching the rums and, and, and going neat. And because of the segment aspect of this, right. you know, within two hours, we're going to try three different rums. You know, <laughs> My palate cleanser happens to be a Twisted Tea Peach because it is my birthday. And it's uh, one of my absolute favorites. Right. right. Anybody playing at home? Oh, that's delicious. Completely, completely delicious, mm-hmm. right? So, getting into the rum segment here, right? Good call with the ice as well. Yeah, yeah, I figured it would give it a little. So, one of the things you want to do is, you know, rum and cigars are, they make great companions. You know, a lot of people, when they start smoking cigars, they, they say, oh, wow, well, let's go to, you know, scotch. Um, a lot of people don't think to pier a wine, which we did a wine segment right. before, or they don't think to pair rum, 
or dare I say tequila. Now, I have a tequila episode in the archives coming up too. So, that, But that is tough because we got to do one segment, let it ride, because you can't sit here and do three or four different things in tequila. I can't. I'm going right? to be honest. I'm, gonna have to t- I'm definitely going to have to take a knee on that one. That's <laughs> tequila is not for me, but I'll, you know, I'll be but, able to enjoy. But the Añejo tequila is, is I think, where it's at. Okay. And, and, and with the rum, we're going to go through some of the different characteristics of rum uh, over there too. So... Um, Basically, we can also start off with something that everybody knows. It's Bacardi Reserva, right? It's right. It's, it's, it's it's white rum. Uh, they just started making it into a spice to get into that market. So you got to look at um, from a rum perspective. Uh, if it's white and they specialize in white and they launched in white, well, there's also spiced rum or dark rum, and market share will tell you. That hey, we we can cut into some of the other cut spice yeah. from there. But if if you're doing a Bacardi Reserver, right, um, you you generally want to focus on any type of medium to full bodied cigar. So uh, unlike wine, when I did the previous segment, the m- less complex the rum is, the more if you want that palette to kind of jump around yep. and kind of have them play against each other, gotcha. um, then you would go to a medium of full-bodied cigar, right? So I always recommend, well, first of all, I'm not, uh, you know, I can stand here and say, okay, this is what I would recommend with Bacardi, but I try to have it so that if you go a medium cigar, what would you choose for, for a medium cigar if you were doing uh, a rum? And if you want to skip around, uh, there's no format here. If you want to retaste, this is, that's the... Uh, Bacardi sub- Superior. So if you I'm want, right out of the gate, like a San Andreas wrapper that that might uh, have to be one of my favorites. And I think it's not too ramped up, but it's it's uh, sturdy enough to, to now, be honest. Pay attention to the tongue on the palate. Different or same? The sensation on the tongue. Um, it's ramped up a little bit more. It's ramped up, but you know, you you do you feel it in different spots or no? Uh, I'm getting it on the back, mm-hmm. right on the back end. Mm-hmm. I guess it's designed it should for that. Be, the 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 answer, in my opinion, is different, right? Yeah. It's going to be different for everyone. Yep. But unlike the first one, where we had the 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 single barrel spiced rum, it kind of gets the the sides of the palate, the sides of the tongue. I was going to say, yeah. This yeah. one should be getting into the back. Kind of shot right towards the back and. Uh, Spiced up a little bit. I, I know. Yeah, I think it's a, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's a little bit spiced up. I mean, it's tough to pay attention to that. Like a lot of people don't 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 do that, you know. But this is called the Stogie Geek Show, so we'll we'll geek out a little bit on on some 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 Stogies and rum, you know. But it, you so now when you're dealing with a the single barrel or, or spiced rum, um, you 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 might want to go if it's too strong for you, then you back it down with the cigar. Right. Okay, versus the like I said, the Bacardi Reserva, it tends it tends to go on the back end. It tends to kick up as far as the um, alcohol content. Right, you so should wanna, feel it right on get, the back and right through the ne- the, the nose, right? You get f- down the strength a little bit of the uh, cigar, maybe like a mild medium. Yeah, no, no with with the, with the Bacardi, you would you would go medium to to full to full. Oh, you're gonna match it right up. Yeah, I, I would I would try to match it. Okay, you know I would try to match it. Uh, there, there too. One of the things I like to do is, you know, you, you, you well, kind of like. I'm thinking right out of the gate, Neanderthal. Then that's one of my. We'll get it to it later, but that's one of my uh, birthday sticks in a few hours. I'm gonna get to, mm-hmm. and uh, that I'm thinking that's gonna play, gonna mm-hmm. play well. Now, what do you think about the headridge with the white? I didn't do that one yet. Did you do that one yet? Or yeah, no? I did. Take a little sip here. The smoke content should feel almost covered. You know what I mean by covered? Like, like, like think about that. Like the smoke con- So when you took a sip of the white and then you had the smoke content, it almost feel like it had a film on it, right? Oh, no. 
Nope. Uh, no, if I'm off my rocker, please tell me. You could be like, Joe. No, it's the first for me, so I'm, I'm really <laughs> trying to pay attention to it. Yeah. Right? So so as opposed to the yeah, other it one. It mashed it a little bit. Yeah. Right, exactly. Mash. Thank you. Yep. Right? So what will happen is when you have the um, clear rums, the ones that look clear, you would go with a uh, medium to full-bodied cigar, and then um, it'll, it'll, it'll mask that. Um, smokiness. It, it'll it'll mask the smokiness, in my opinion, okay. uh, of that. So when you when you deliver it, it's kind of. It also depends on how you want to, you know, uh, what situation you're in. You know, if you had a family barbecue with the kids and you need to slow down, maybe a robusto and a little bit of masking with some sipping is a lot better than you know rum and cigars and, and going you know and going, right down. and going crazy. You know, no, so if it's a birthday bought- party and someone's getting married and you're at a bachelor party, yeah. you, you, you might want to throw in some 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 stronger rums. Right. Right. Um, and 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 I have a, a rum theory that goes all out the window um, when you meet with Mike Mike Bellity. I have a story about about rum and cigars. We're well, certainly uh, not going to match that guy. Uh, drink for drink. <laughs> <laughs> right, so a world of hurt. right, so again, with with the Bacardi Reserver, um, you you really want to go to to a medium to a full, uh, because of the uh, caramel, the vanilla, and the licorice notes that the rum comes, and they say that the white rum is supposed to be similar to like a really dull down bourbon because of the caramel. Okay. Even though you're white and, and, and right. brown and it it just it's just on the palate with, with, with cigars. So, you know, um when I do pairings, I usually mostly uh toggle back to some of the classic facings there. So again, white rum, medium, experiment. Uh if you have done some experimentation in the past or if you're gonna watch the show and get back to us, Joe H at stogiegeeks.com. You can email me. Give me your feedback uh, on that um, there. Talk about cigars, not college or anything. No. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right? There you go. Yep. Right? So uh, another another one that I really, really liked um, there was the Anniversario Pompero rum, right? This rum here. Hold on. Right? This rum here, um, I love going to a, a a big liquor store, not a small one, but like a, like a, a, a specialty store that has maybe 50, 60 different rums or 20, 30 different rums as opposed to just, you know, five or ten to, to actually choose from. But with this here is uh, the, this rum tends to run a, a little sweet, right? Yep. So be, because it runs... A little sweet over on the palate, and we don't have a sample with that. Um, you know, it's 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 got it's it, it's got a spicy flavor, but it also has uh, you know cl- uh, a little bit of uh, cloves and a little bit of cinnamon and tea feel to it. Gotcha. So it's going to be a little more a um, little more mild, um, but to me on the palate, it has more bite right. because you're in that twenty five dollar price range. With the rums. The uh, sharpness of the flavor is uh, more prominent, you're saying? Excuse me? The sharpness of the flavor is more prominent? The sharpness of the alcohol okay. is more. You know how sometimes you take a spare, especially if you're doing it neat, and you're like, whoa, like, you know. Yeah, um, let, let you know what's there. Right, absolutely. Yep. So with that being said, um, because it has some spice um, there, uh, I, I wanted to pair it with something uh, because it had an alcoholic I don't want to say alcoholic bite because I had a, a, a sometimes you take a, a sip of a spirit and it tends to have a bite with it. Now you can go either way with that. If the bite is too hard or too harsh for you, then you would go with a mild cigar. Gotcha. You know, yep. uh, real mild, you know, Connecticut. Uh, you, I would go, you know, maybe Hoyo de Monterey or I would go uh, Ashton, Connecticut. Uh, I like the Griffins. I've always been a little, you know, the Griffins, Connecticut. Yep. If you wanted to get into some of the boutique cigars, you can try any type of Connecticut. So, you know, if, if you're doing uh, a rum. I'm thinking right off the bat, uh, Matilda Serena. That's uh, uh, that's one of those lighter cigars that I absolutely enjoy. And I'm thinking a stronger, stronger alcohol pairing. Um, probably be a win. Mm-hmm. Nice. But if you want to get rowdy on the palate. Right? Let's go. Let's get to him. <laughs> if, you, if, if you want to get rowdy on the palate, yeah. you would go something with a little more strength 
So maybe La Flora Dominicana or, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm talking regular La Flora Dominicana. I'm not talking anything with like the La Hero. Right. I would probably go Nicaraguan with that. Okay. You know, so uh, if it were me toggling back, if I were doing the Bacardi regular, I would do something medium, you know, maybe full. Yep. I would do medium and what I call like completely tasty. Like gotcha. tasty with the cigar, right? Because I like to balance spirit. Sometimes I have a spirit neat, and I'm like, "Wow, it's completely tasty." Like last episode, we had that pilar rum. Was that right? Pilar. Yep. Yeah, we had the pilar. To me, it was really, really tasty, right? So if I had that there, I would go with a cigar that I would. If it's really, really tasty on the end of the spirit, I would probably peel back and go more of a of a a, a, a medium. Okay. Uh, there for, for for me, right? right? If it's a little more harsher in the alcohol, taste of alcohol, and the alcohol company is trying to get more of the cinnamon flavor or more yep. of the caramel flavor or more of the, the rum notes, but it still tastes like heavy, heavier, did, dare I say cheaper alcohol or something right. like that, yep. then you could either peel it way back on the cigar spectrum or you can just ramp it right up. You know, I've I've just had just meet it head on and yeah. Yeah, I mean and and, and again depends that, on the mood that, where you're that would exactly that, that campfire scenario you're yep. saying. That's yeah. Yep, that that would depend on your, your mood uh over there. Um so you know, like I said, if you're gonna do it with, with like that Pompero anniversary uh anniversary, um, like I said, you know, it's a it's a twenty twenty something dollar bottle. You, you, you know, you could do, like I said, Ashton, Hoyo de Monterey, something like that. If you wanted to kick it in, um, nice La Florida Dominicana, something, something tasty, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. And, and then, you know, it, and, and I don't mean to throw out brand names. I'm just trying to give the listeners kind of like a gauge as to what type of cigar feel that I'm trying to articulate. Because sometimes, you know, when they're ranked medium, medium to me might, might not be medium to you and stuff like that. The so. Christophe GC is coming to, coming to mind for me. That's a... Certainly some strength, but uh, flavor bomb for these. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Match up. This is a rum that I, I think does not get enough of attention, so I'm going to spend a little, a little bit of time on it uh, there, right? This rum here, and I, and I almost got this rum when, when we were pre- uh, prepping for the show. Yep. I'm, I, kn- I knew you saw it on the shelf. The uh, Mount Gay. I did see that. Yep, the Mount the the Mount Gay. Hold on, we got. Yeah, I'm 21. Yes, I am 21. I promise. All right. Um, again, the the Mount Gay. You're gonna have. Uh, it's 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 fragrant. It's sweet. It's light, clear. They got a little bit of molasses in there. Right. Uh, it's 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 First really presentation good. Presentation on the bottle. That's what stood out for me too. Yeah, but it's one of those things I feel. And, and again, I'm just judging from my center of influence and the consumers that I know. They would use that to kind of mix, mix something with. Okay. You know, so if they were going to do maybe like a, a rum, you know, it's summertime, break out the ice machine and do something, you know, do a rum and coke and whatnot. It's one of those. It's one of those older blends that have just been on the shelf. Uh, they retail for around, I think it's like twenty bucks. Yep. They retail for around $20, and uh, with that, you're going to get vanilla and citrus notes, uh, straightforward. Um, it's, it's called a, a medium-bodied medium rum, okay? And what's interesting about this rum, and I really think that you might want to pick some up, because if you have it neat, it tastes totally different than if it was on the rocks, because when you put it on the rocks, and there's actually a note here, when you actually put it on, uh, when you put it on ice, it becomes more sugary, and then has an oily finish, mm. as opposed to uh, if if you had it neat, it would it would not have that much of of, of a texture. So uh, texture a on more the, crisp. Exactly. Okay. So so from there, now you can say, okay, well, if I have a Mount Gay rum pairing, I can go two different ways. You know, and see, that's really the, the joy of pairing is, is to, you know, it, it, it's, it's everyone's experimentation. But if you were going to have something that is more sugary and a little bit of sweeter, you see where I'm going with that type of brand because of that component. Um, consumers, in my opinion, from my experience, tend to use that as a mixing drink. 
Because if they were going to mix it to make either a pina colada or if they were going to mix, you know, m- m- maybe, you know, uh, some type of summertime fun drink right. type thing yeah, yeah. Uh, with that there, um, they would do that. So if you were having a sugary, sweet type of rum, what, 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 what cigar would you, would you go with? Interesting. It, my go-to is always the Malibu, but I'm, I'm trying to branch off. What, the Malibu that. rum? Or, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Malibu rum, the fruity drinks, tailor made for the summertime. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm certainly going to reach out for the, for this one and some of these, some of these others. You know, get into a larger shop and more of a uh, diverse selection. Mm-hmm. Um, that's part of the fun. We'll you know, clear your palate because now we're going to go sugary sweet because we've already delved into the other one, right? So this is this is not the Mount Gay, but this is to mimic the sugary mixed drink era of rums, right? And we are going to dabble a scotch into cigar-infused rums and, and, and give some thoughts. But so when you do that now... Oh, that is sweet. Delicious as is. Yeah, it is. I mean, this stuff yeah, is. is dangerous. Like, I, <laughs> this, stuff, this stuff is on my counter. How much of this do we have? This is, <laughs> no, this stuff, this stuff is on my counter. And, um, you know, it's great in the summertime when you just want to sit... And, you know, you just want to have a, you know, a quick cocktail after work and just unwind. You don't need much um, there. You know, is this <laughs> That's also not right. not cigar rating, but is this Oasis? Like this is like, this is like <laughs> flip flop. <laughs> now, did you do the, the cool eats? Yeah, delicious. Sweet. I'm not. Uh, the cigar itself doesn't detract from the sweetness of the uh, the rum. It's. uh I'm still getting rum on the palate. It's still, still surfacing, and uh, I was I was able to properly enjoy the cigar as well. Let me ask you this question: Do you get when you do a sweet infused? I'm going to say sweet infused, so it's a sweeter rum. So um, obviously, if you do a little bit of research, they have coconut. They have one that mimics Fireball. Uh, they have a couple that are um, uh, dragon fruit. Right. They have some that are li- you know, lime, for, made for fruity drinks. So this is to mimic one of those, say, like a pina colada or something like that, right? Do you think it takes away from the cigar? Not like take away from the cigar experience. Take away from the taste of the cigar. Because in my yeah, opinion, I'd say so. Yeah, yeah. It's going to take away some of, that, some of that bite, but maybe, you know, the consumer at home, they may be after that. They may not be, you know... The, the heaviest of smokers. They're not whacking three plus cigars down a day, or mm-hmm. it could be at tail, you know, tail end of the uh, the night. And uh, want to give that palate a rest. This is certainly going to do that. You're going to enjoy it, right? And uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily pair that with a uh, you know, one of the pricier sticks. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, no, because you, you, you don't want to, want to lose that. That you're specifically reaching out for that reason. Excellent point. That's the point I was trying to get at. Gotcha. Is if you're having something that has a lot of sugar in it, or um, like this rum, the, the, the Mount Gay rum, that you have, and then if you were to have it neat, you'd have one experience. But if you were to throw in ice or throw in other things to make a recipe, and that recipe tend to be on the really, really sugary side, my opinion... Doesn't matter what you smoke, right? Like it, no, it I, does not. I it does. It does not matter no. what you smoke. I mean, I've I've taken shortcuts, uh, even here on the show. A uh, perfect example of that non rum is if I have a cigar and it's either not agreeing with me or I'm not liking it or whatever rating you give it to. It doesn't matter. That's another segment. Uh, De- a classic thing is like a De Serono. There you go. Because it, it's, boom, it's got that amaretto, it's got that sweetness, and I think that, uh, actually I know, right, because right. I have friends who I ask, but um, the, the more sugary component that the drink has, um, the more it'll take away from the, the, the cigar. So uh, a, a real sugary drink such, yeah, as, more, such as this. More prominent you know, on, uh, on the palate. Yeah, so the rule of thumb is don't have an Opus X with the sugary drink because it, it should take away from, <laughs> from the uh, – because I think even, even the Opus X flavor we, we really wouldn't, wouldn't get past this Voss Field here. You know, what do you think? I, I agree, but it is good rum. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. It is, it is amazing. Like we get, you know, it, it is it, really good. Mm. I'm gonna grab another sample while we're here. Mm. Yeah, it's so good. But again, mm. 
again, in my opinion, it just takes away from from that component. You know, it, it takes away from that component. So again, um, with with the um, Mount Gay rum, straightforward. It's a medium bodied rum. If you have it neat, it's awesome. Uh, you know, it, it gives you a, a bite, so you really feel like you're having a, a strong a, a, a a, a rum drink, a strong rum, a rum drink, but when you put it on ice, it totally comes up with, with the sugary component. That's why a lot of people use it for mixing drinks, and because it's cheap when you're mixing drinks, right, too. Right, Very nice. A rum like this, getting back, toggling back to the uh, Thomas II rum over here, um, we have it on ice... And when we finish, for the next segment, we're going to pour it neat. And you, you shouldn't notice any different other than the hot cold in your mouth. It should, it should tackle the tongue right on the two sides. That is, that is how we had it uh, pregame. And uh, I was able to notice that, too. You know, just difference with the ice, that is definitely a change. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. And, and how you get to this point is, you know, you, you just got to play around. You know, you just gotta you you just gotta play around. Know what you like. Know what you don't like. Um, you know, I always carry a summertime. I always carry a couple of sticks that you know, if I'm at a party and they're serving sugary drinks, you yep. know, uh, I'm not gonna bother taking out that stick that I've craved for three or four days. Right. You know, you just you're just not gonna do that. I can tell you, it's not a bad way to spend a birthday. <laughs> We're not done yet. We're not done yet. By the way, if you want to wish Joe D a happy Beautiful. birthday, Joe H at StogieGeeks.com. That'll be our next segment that we're going to do, so stay tuned for that. We'll have to do a birthday thing. I'm sure it'll surround more rum and more rum stories. All right? That's so, fine by me. <laughs> um, one of the things that I think has really hit the, mo hit the market there is uh, two, two things. You, you have, uh, have you ever heard of? Uh, Cruzan rum? No. They got like a little sailboat, a little cru Cruzan, no? Well, Cruzan rums make a whole bunch of other other flavored rums, okay. if you will. So they so they play in that market. But what they do make is a, a single barrel estate rum. So in other words, you know, they've gone out and made all these tropical flavors. So if you go, if you go to, you know, we, my family travels to Hilton Head ever since we were little. So, you know, we've always seen in a tiki bar, you know, you got Cuisana and you got like six uh, different versions uh, and whatnot. Actually, yeah, now, yeah, being on vacation, that's. Uh, yeah, that's where it's at, yeah. right? Yep, so, yep. so it has all of those flavors, right? So because they're making all the mixed drinks and all of that stuff with it. But Cuisana makes a single barrel of state rum. So um, and it, it, it's got. In my opinion, it's got a lot of oakiness to it. Okay. It, it, it's really one of those things, like, you'd be like, croissant, make, they probably make it. It's probably low batch um, there. Um, but what's really nice about it is they, their version, not mine, it tried to mimic some, some cognac. So it's and it, it's pretty good. Like it's really it's 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 a really good rum, you know. And and maybe you know maybe in another segment as as the Stogie Geeks journey con continues, I'll break off into you know maybe we'll do just you know the Mount Gay versus the Cruzan thing or something like that. But you know, um, Joe Hosempa's personal favorite when it comes to rum. So uh, let me let me get back. I'm, I'm ADD's kicking in. I'm sorry. <laughs> right, Cruzan single since it has that pronounced oakiness and it's on the tongue, it's full bodied. Right, you you taste a little bit. Uh, you start to taste like after a while. You start to taste like the once you get past the oakiness, you start to get past you get into the rum part, right. where you know which traditional you get that cinnamon or you get some sort of a sweetness yep. um, there. Uh, with that being said, uh, because of the because of those notes, I paired and in, in, uh, I paired that up um, with any cigar that you would um, have that would have a leathery component. So interesting. Have at it, right? right so, yeah. uh, so that being it feels said, pretty open. Yeah. yeah. So, so I mean, you know, so you could go maybe with, with a Maduro. Uh, you can certainly go uh, Joe's favorite in Paul's humidor. One of Joe's favorites in Paul's humidor, the uh, pork tenderloin. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, yep. can, you know, it has uh, that whole component. Uh, you can certainly go the EP Carrillo, uh, 2013. Limited edition, the, the the limited release. I, I gave an Oasis last week. Yep. You know, it has that component that you just search for, and 
as long as you don't mix it with anything, in my opinion. Because as soon as you start putting, like, the OJ, the Coke, or you start making yeah, cocktails, yeah. Um, which is good. Now, sometimes I'll f- have a Robusto and then just do maybe one neat. And then depending on the social part, if you're not going to be having cigars all day or whatever, um, you can just, you know, have at it and go on to the drinks with the umbrellas or whatever, <laughs> which are good. <laughs> they they are all, good, too. They're all good. Um, one of the things I like, a couple more uh, cu- couple more rums I want to get through. I love Doc and Stormies. I love Doc and Stormies for a couple of reasons, right? <laughs> First and foremost... Uh, historically, my family loves Doc and Stormies, right? You were so, raised on it. So, so, so growing up as a kid, you know, my father was in the military and the Navy, and his shipmates would come in, and, and they would have Doc and Stormies. And let me tell you something. That, that, that's that Goslin su- sweet rum, mm-hmm. right? It's mixed with Goslin, has some ginger beer. I love to mix the Doc and Stormies with the ginger beer, but the non Goslin is ginger beer. So I like to take regular ginger beer with the Goslin's rum. And then mix it to make your your, yes. your Doc and Stormies. But they're, in my opinion, completely complicated to pair a cigar with, right? Because mm, it, there is a sugary component. There's just too much going on. It, 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 there's just way too much going on. Mm. Um, you know, so what I do, I just wanted to mention the Doc and Stormies, right? <laughs> what I do with a pair, when I'm with my non-cigar smoking friends, right. I have a Doc and Stormy. Right, yeah. you got you got to maximize your time. Yeah. You know, you got to maximize your time. But if you were, um, I don't know. Um, basically, some of the pairings that I've came across there um, would be anything mild, because again, you, you just got so much sugar going on. It's it's back to that 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 Mount Gay rum argument. Or there's so much, yeah, there's such thing as too much. So you want to want to enjoy the dark and stormy, but you know, uh, tail me that that milder cigar. Mm-hmm. Yep, I got you. Now. A long, long time ago, no, I'm only kidding. <laughs> we had met a gentleman by the name of Mike Bellity, right? <laughs> Good guy, friend uh, of the show. And he's not only a friend of the show, uh, he absolutely, positively, inside baseball, loves Ron Zacapa. Like, loves it, you know? And when my first impression of him when I met him at a couple of shops is he, you know, comes in, you do a pairing, you do a t- pairs it with that. We've gone out to dinner with him, had the opportunity to go uh, offline and hang yep. out. Loves that rum. So ultimately, when you're with Mike Bellity, now you know. what do you smoke? <laughs> right. Right? <laughs> you smoke either a uh, Imperia, right, when it first came out. Yep. And I will tell you that I don't know if it's meant to go together. I don't know if that was planned. But to me, that's how I was raised, MLB Cigar Ventures, right? So to me, Ron Zacapa goes awesome with the uh, Imperia and David Pierre. Like, you know, the other stuff, uh, uh, the uh, Aventador, and the um, what's the other one off the top of my head? The uh, Islero, Islero, right? Yeah. The, the Islero, uh, I've never had with Ron Zacapa, but I had David Pierlick and I've had um, the um, Imperia, his original uh, yep. brand with uh, Ron Zacapa rum, neat, straight up, no ice, no mess, no fuss, boom, done deal. And yeah. let me tell you something, this, the, it, there's, and it's funny because. Ron's a cop rum tends to be you're you're in that you know thirty eight forty dollar range. I was gonna ask you yeah. that price yeah. point. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in that thirty eight forty dollar range, <clears> but <throat> you're when you're having it neat. To me, it's it's so well balanced where it has a sweetness component, but it also has a dare I say a mimicking of the cognac p- uh, okay. component there. Have you had it with ice? No. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I I don't, I don't like it with ice. I, I don't like it with ice. I've had a little bit of ice because sometimes, you know, you don't want you don't want to dry. You're where right. you are if you're someplace hot or whatever yep. and whatnot. And you're just like, eh, you know, and, and just, just neat straight up is it really does the trick, you know. So let's wrap up this segment by just give me some of your personal notes and some of your personal takeaways. Okay. What, what, are your, what are you thinking? Um, I think right now, seeing so, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, semi-new to the, uh, the rum game, I'm, I'm kind of leaning more towards the uh, – the sweeter side, but I, I can appreciate the uh, the strength and complexity of uh, the two. Do you um, pair? Well, let's start with that. Do you pair 
So guys with, with other spirits, and if so, what? Or the, you just don't, you keep them separate still? For the most part, I'm, I'm really, you know, a uh, whiskey and bourbon based kind of guy. Some red wine if I want to want to get loose. And uh, some good old-fashioned twisted tea. I have rather than it's a nice palate cleanser and get that, that sweetness. I'm more along the, uh, the sweetness end of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but that said, you know, going back to what we were talking about, you know, you're not going to, not have to pair a, uh, you know, stronger, more, you know, not even stronger, but uh, a more expensive cigar, mm-hmm. you know, kind of in that, that middle uh, price range. Um, to enjoy the two, not have one more, more of power in the, than the other. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm uh, willing to try. Yes. Yeah, venture out. That's, that's half the fun. See, with me, most of my pairings is done in the summer. Okay. Because personally, most of my cigar smoking is done during the business hours, right. and uh, I don't go around and drink and rum all day and pairing, <laughs> and pairing cigars and then show up at clients. You're not about that pirate life. It's, it's not, you know, <laughs> it's not a, it's not a, 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 a good habit to get into, hmm. I guess. But uh, it's a bad look, you know. But but you know, when I do sit down. And, and do get, because to me, sitting down and having a cigar and relaxing is one thing. Sitting down and pairing it is, I, I need like, you know, a Sunday fun day or Saturday weekend. I don't like to pair it. Like, I don't like to, to, to golf and drink. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'll love a couple of drinks on the golf course, yeah. but I don't, I don't, I don't get, I don't, I don't try to mix the two. I like to have my cigars. Have my rum, have whatever it is, but this stuff. I think I'm in the. Uh, but this this I'm in stuff. The minority there. This stuff is on yeah. the counter, right? <laughs> this this is, is this amazing. <laughs> this is this is a, like you know it's it's. Uh, Any time of day. And this, I mean, Which is dangerous. If but. if you you know if if God forbid something happened to you and you had ten days, I think this should be your all ten. Your, your, yeah. your, your drink of <laughs> your your drink of choice. So so what do we learn, right? Right from from this, the more sugar. Content on the palate, right. or the sweeter the content of the rum, just go into some mild. You could go into a harsh cigar because it might not, it, it might not matter, right? right? It might not right. matter on your palate. And then there you go. If you mix in drinks with the rum, you know, pina colada, etc., then you, you, you'll go with that. I think rate of smoke too. If you, you happen tend to be a uh, smoke a little bit on the faster end, mm-hmm. uh, maybe that stronger cigar, it's going to power its way through some of that. Some of that sweetness, right? But more relaxed pace. Uh, probably, like I said, you probably want to deviate from that. Mm-hmm. One of the things. Um, this is Stogie Geeks, right? We got to have some recipes, right? Because some of the listeners there. I don't want to go too crazy on the recipes. I will post a link to the recipes uh, over on the Stogie Geeks wiki um, after the show, um, so you can get your own uh, recipes that would go with the uh, Thomas Two. Uh, rum. Uh, for the next segment, we're going to continue with the Thomas too. Um, but one of the re- uh, recipes here, I but think. Why is the rum gone? Right, it's going to be gone. It's <laughs> going to it's going to be gone. Right. It's called the obviously Thomas too is Newport. It's called the Newport Stormy. Okay, four ounces of ginger beer over ice with Thomas too rum. Bang done over. Done. Yep. Now I've actually started that last year at this time because again socially i'm spending more time outdoors yep. so i'm doing a little bit more pairing you know i'm not gonna sit outside and freeze right. you know i'm not gonna pair rum and then go see a client you know what i mean yep. in the winter time i don't advise you to do that right <laughs> so but so you have a newport storm and i've actually gotten off of the goslins and gone through through regular straight rums with the ginger and let me tell you something that is workable in the cigar pairing realm, as opposed to the straight Goslins, because the Goslins black spicy rum, I mean, it, it's sugar. It's just sugar 101 right. when it comes to rum, right? Um, that being said, when when you're dealing with like a single barrel rum or a specialty rum or something like this, the Thomas Two, um, the 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 sugar comes from the um, the sugar comes from from more from the ginger. Than the actual rum, gotcha. but you also don't want to spend a ton of money on rum and smash it with some ginger beer either. You know what I mean? No, not if you're entertaining for a number of people. Right, right. So there you go. Um, they do have a two old, uh, old fashioned, and I had to mention this because uh, Paul loves to do some old fashions, and maybe we can we might have to save him a little bit for for that. But um, you do uh, two ounces of Thomas two rum, uh, two dashes of bitters. And five ounces of simple syrup there. And you can do a uh, two, 
two, because T-E-W, Thomas Two Rum, uh, it's called the Two Old Fashioned uh, there. You can make daiquiris with it. You can make some Mai Tais with it. Um, we got to do this one um, in reference to Rhode Island oh. and because I love the name. <clears throat> the name of this drink is called Hoist the Colors. Nice. <laughs> right? Name of the so, show. So, you know, <laughs> Hoist the Colors as we raised, uh, raided Paul's humidor to create this episode. What number is this? 235, I believe. 235. Episode 235. We hoisted the colors. All right. But this is um, Thomas Two Rum mixed with an ounce of native Rhode Island autocrat coffee syrup. Ooh. Right? Um, and you top it with ice. So it'd be like a, almost like a, a sombrero, I guess, because you're, you're mimicking the, the color right. or whatever. But again, when you're looking at that from the autocrat, you know it's going to be sugary sweet. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? You know it's going to be it's so sugary sweet. So, Set you off on a diet so automatically, color. so automatically, if I were here and say, okay, we're going to do hoist the colors, and you knew that it was a sugary sweet madness with the autocrat, right. you should know what cigar appeal from li- listening to this episode. Absolutely. You know what I mean? But if we're going to have it neat, then you can experiment with some of the other cigars that you like because it it will change the not only the drink, it'll it'll change the uh, smoke as well. Not afraid to dig deep into the humidor and grab one of those those tasty ones. Yes, gotcha. That's my that's my takeaway from Rum One One with Joe. It's an education. Any questions? I'm good. Maybe we're good. The, uh, maybe the listeners. When we come back, we're gonna say Happy Birthday to Joe D. We're gonna talk about birthday smokes and then dare I say. There's a super fight coming, and I don't know how I feel about this. We'll be right back. 